Uh, so at Blue Acorn, we're a full-service e-commerce development and optimization shop. Um, we have a variety of clients across, across all verticals. And as a data analyst here, I get to look at industry trends as a whole, but I also get to drill down into very specific challenges that clients face. And we leverage that data to make more informed design and development decisions. <laughs> well, that's really fun. I actually do a lot of freelance work for a polling firm, and that was my first job. Um, a bunch of my internships were political-based, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how I got into data. I interned at a firm called Civis Analytics, which was formed from the 2012 Obama alumni, and that was the perfect marriage of math and politics, which was really just sparked my interest, and from there, I worked at a data vendor, which was really, really big data, really cool stuff with the Experian file and all the voter files and everything like that. And now I work here at Blue Acorn. Yeah, so I've always been pretty strong in math, but you know, you never really know how to apply it. Basically, when you major in math, and everyone thinks, so you're going to be a math teacher, right? <laughs> or a mathematician. Um, and it's really cool because there are so many different professions out there now. I mean, big data is like a buzzword, but it, there are so many jobs that use data. And the cool thing about Google Analytics is that it's used in so many different sectors, and it's a really great skill to have and just kind of understand. It really, I think, separates you from the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, to be totally honest, in most cases, a lot of marketers, they kind of have to have a wide ranging skill set. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to at least know the very basics for Google Analytics. They do have programs to kind of like Right. That there's a huge difference between going through the little program and actually applying it to where you work. Yeah, and I definitely understand that we have a lot of platforms that we deal with. We do a lot of testing on my side, so mm -hmm. we have like Optimizely and Monetate, and then we also have the Magento backend. So I definitely understand like you don't have to be an expert to really use GA. So GA, for people who don't know, Google Analytics is a premium analytics service that allows analysts and stakeholders to understand their businesses better and track key performance ind indicators. Um, GA can be really as detailed as you want it to be, but um, some of that requires front-end resources. But out of the box, it's really powerful if set up properly. And What's really awesome is that there's a really big community out there. So whenever you have a question, you can just Google it. And I'm sure someone has encountered the same thing. So there's so many tutorials and, do and documentation that it's, it's really like you can constantly be learning. OK, well, the simple answer is that <laughs> organizations use GA to track KPIs and measure the success of their businesses. But the real answer is that I think organizations don't even use Google Analytics to do that. You'd be so surprised to know what mm -hmm. big clients out there and big companies that you'd assume are so sophisticated are really in the dark ages. <laughs> and um, the uses will really just depend on the business type. But um, GA can basically be used to monitor overall trends, observe interactions, identify pain points, and validate things like return on investment or return on ad spend. So a really common thing that I personally look at, and this is just a specific use case here, but we look at checkout performance a lot. So we'll look at user flow and see how people are interacting with the site and maybe what points are they dropping off in, and we can use that to inform decisions later. Um, so the cool thing about it also, <laughs> there's a lot of cool things, but on the agency side, we also get to um, leverage data in a different way where we get to aggregate data across clients. And that's really cool to see more trends in our like industry as a whole. And I do that using the API. And mm -hmm. it always nerds me out, gets me excited <laughs> that they're, um, they have an API. That it's, um, they have libraries for lots of different languages, including Java, JS, .NET, PHP, pretty much anything and it really opens a lot of doors for uh, reporting and kind of computational right. power. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and to be building on that, uh, that's exactly what we did, I think, for the Amazon Prime Day stuff, which was like a really weird hunch, but we wanted to basically compare and see, you know, how Amazon Prime like created holiday will affect some of our clients and just uh, data that we have access to. Um, that's some pretty interesting results that we got from that. Yeah, and 
obviously you could go through in the GA web console and pull all that data for all your clients across all different things. But if you can just put it in a query and have it spit out in a batch mode, it's just really great. Yeah, so right out of the box, GA comes with a lot of really good reports. Um, the top level reports are things like audience, traffic acquisition, user behavior, and conversions. Within those variables like age, gender, device type, browser, sources, site content, site speed, and, um, channel usage is, are tracked, and um, which reports you end up using are really just going to vary based on your business and objectives. So here at an e-commerce shop, we focus mostly on on-site user experience. So we'll focus on things like engagement with certain features and um, measure performance that way and see, you know, does this design change help? Are people not, you know, are people not engaging with the navigation or something? It really just helps us identify pain points out there and um, kind of helps us direct resources and tell clients like this is something that you should be doing because you really need it and we have right. data to back it up. Um, but if you're on the marketing side, you might want to focus more on the channel or AdWords performance. Um, if you're on more of the content driven side, you'd probably be most interested in metrics like time on site, page mm -hmm. views per visit, um, views to certain pages and just user behavior. And it really just depends on your objectives. Um, the one shortfall with GA is that there's no one-to-one -one relationships. So these are just like aggregated statistics across people. And it's still very powerful and it's probably more than a lot of people need. But um, if you do need like that one-to-one -one relationship, you do have to get another tool. Listening to clients and understanding their objectives really helps us narrow it down. We're pretty much a traditional e-commerce shop, so most of our clients are going to be revenue focused or conversion rate focused. But when you really talk to them about their objectives and they understand, you know, like so many things go into conversion rate and your overall revenue. Like we only can control part of it, so maybe we should be focusing on something more specific. Sure. So um, if a if a client comes to us and we develop a new feature for them and well we might prove it out that they need the feature using mm -hmm. GA and then we'll prove out that it was a, a good decision or a bad decision right. in the end um, but there are just certain things like checkout to checkout success I think is a really good KPI mm -hmm. outside of like conversion rate because sure. in the end we're not driving people to the site right. in the business that we do so we can't do like handle as much of like the top funnel stuff if right. that makes sense. Basically, if you want to do anything out of the box, um, not out of the box, you're going to need tagging. So it's really important. It's implemented by GA in general is just in implemented by pasting the JS snippet into the head tag. But the additional tagging will basically require a front end resource or Google Tag Manager. Um, tag Manager is pretty cool. It's a WYSIWYG way to tag things um, without development resources. But um, we use tagging to track things that are not natively tracked. So interactions with certain pieces of the website, things that you want to know that Google is just not going to give you. Um, like, for instance, if it doesn't propagate a page view in Google Analytics, right. you, you're not going to see it. But Certain things don't probably, you might want to see um, engagement with a video right. or something like that, and that's not natively tracked, or I don't know. Uh, it really, I think what it really helps with is to group and aggregate events together sure. so you can see overall, like you might know, oh yeah, like this person's in going to this category page, but if you can see all the category pages aggregated, right. you can see all the product pages aggregated, it really helps your analysis. Absolutely. So I mean, it's really just a better way to organize things and get um, more specific information. Right. And it can be as specific or as general as you want it to be. I mean, you can basically just like, if you want to just start out, you can just mm -hmm. tag your add to cart action. Like right. a lot of things are done with Ajax and things that just don't trigger right. uh, page views. So the only way you're going to see it is through custom event tagging. Definitely. And with like marketing folks, they use a lot of kind of on screen pop ups for like emails, like email subscriptions, and yeah, definitely. So you can set up filters for certain views to ensure the incoming data is accurate and it's what you want to see. So, for instance, you could set up a view that's just from one source or 
um, just includes a certain geography or something like that. I would always keep an unfiltered raw version because once you apply a filter, you can't get it back. So um, definitely just always have one that says like, don't delete or anything. Right. Um, but you get 25 views per property, so that should be more than enough yeah. to, to get you started. But outside of filtering, all the traffic being recorded by GA mm -hmm. um, can be segmented into smaller kind of pieces. So um, you might want to see things like just men on your site or just people from mm -hmm. this media market or just people that are on a mobile device. Sure. There's really a lot of things you can segment by breakpoint. You can segment right. by um, invent engagement too. Like mm -hmm. if you want to see people that only like only people that watched a video. Right. Okay. So there's kind of two pieces of that. Um, mm -hmm. The first piece I think is that some of the demographic stuff, like some of the stuff being recorded by Google Analytics is pretty short, like they're pretty sure of it, like your IP address is being recorded, right. so they know where you, you are, sure. and they know basically what, you, what device you're on based on the browser, and pretty much like I would trust those things, but things like age and gender and right. interests, um, basically modeled guesses based on what Google knows about you, mm -hmm. so probably your browsing patterns or um, geography or just something like that that they would flag you like, oh, we think you're an 18 to 24 year old male in whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I would definitely take that with a grain of salt. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I like having it available sure. because it can give you like an idea of what's going on. But right. I mean, someone, it could be a communal computer or something like in your house and right. your teenager uses it or something like that. Um, so it's not going to be, definitely not going to be a hundred percent accurate. And one issue, the other issue with this is that with segmentation, mm -hmm. if you don't have a premium account, right. it's always going to sample your data down. So mm -hmm. that's really annoying. If you like want to see something, sometimes you'll 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 sample it and then right. you do it again, and it's a completely different thing. So you you know your overall picture of the demographics. Implementing GA really isn't that hard. After you've created your Google Analytics account you will get what's called a UA tracking code. And then you or your developer, depending on who um, handles this kind of stuff, would put the tracking code on any page you want um, before the closing head tag. That's very important. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and um, just ensuring that things are set up correctly, I can personally do a very quick audit. Um, I think that there are really useful things that people miss a lot. Certain things that we will look for when we mm -hmm. onboard a client, you know, we get a new Google Analytics account. You sure. can't just assume that it's it's correct. I mean, you might get a, an account from a huge company and just assume it's correct, but you mm -hmm. definitely have to check it. So um, things that we'll look for, like IP filters, um, there's a lot of ways that URLs right. can get mangled with campaigns and um, pagination and just other red flags that might skew your data. Um, you definitely want to be filtering out like bot traffic because Amazon does a lot of crawling, Google does a lot of crawling. Mm -hmm. So there's stuff like that that can really skew your data. And then when they see the real view of it, they're like, wow, right. that's really what, what it's like. Yeah, so there's a lot of cool things that you can do without tagging, but that are not really native mm -hmm. in GA that you can do through the console. So one thing that's cool is goal tracking. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of goals are destination-based. Um, that means you would select a certain URL, or you could do a combination of URLs. That's how we set up the funnel, basically, to see, like, OK, people made it to the billing step and then the shipping step. Um, but you can also use duration mm -hmm. on site, page, pages um, or screens per session, or just event based goals. It can really be whatever goal that you want. You can have multiple. I've seen like companies have 100 goals, and um, it's really useful, especially when you're running like a campaign or something like that. It really helps sure. you understand um, what's going on. So, setting up these goals takes only a few minutes, and um, what you do, in, you can also report on. Um, by modifying the conversions column and just looking at the funnel visualization alone, that's a really cool thing. Um, so if you do have a destination goal, you can it's a visual representation of people entering and leaving in certain steps. So that's a pretty cool format. And I think it really resonates with a lot of like upper level people. Um, yeah. But there's also so other sorts of things that you can do. You can set up custom variables. Um, if you do have integrations with 
monetate or optimize the those integrate with Google Analytics and you have you can create custom variables to see who's getting bucketed and have that go through mm -hmm. Google Analytics. Or um, another option is to create dashboards, mm -hmm. which is really cool um, if you want to get pretty right. pretty complicated. Um, if you're basically looking at the same metrics all the time, mm -hmm. you definitely want to set up a custom dashboard. Um, and it, it helps to have a pretty picture to deliver to someone in the end because it can have basically the five metrics that you always look at, but they're in right. five different reports. You could just click it once. <laughs> cool, so shortcuts in GA can be really helpful if you're always looking at the same reports and segments in GA. Um, they allow you to preserve the report configurations as well as the segments applied. So for instance, if you're moving around metrics, if you're always looking at the same segment of people, which is very common, mm -hmm. um, you could save that in the shortcuts section. Um, you could also use what I just said, like before the dashboards, if right. you need something more custom. Because sometimes things in GA, you can't combine certain variables with certain reports just because the inflexibility of GA. Mm -hmm. And through dashboards, you really can combine a lot more stuff.